Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek 25th Anniversary. I'm your host, Evil Captain Kirk. I'm Captain Kirk. I'm Captain Kirk! So anyway, uh, one of the disadvantages of the format of this game for doing a Let's Play like this is that there's not really any way to save in between the ending of the previous mission and the start of the next one. So I'm going to get myself back to the start of the second mission and kind of do a jump cut to there. Okay, here we go. Hijacked. Hijacked. I should probably let Bone say it. Okay. Message from Starfleet, Captain. Oh, we got a new On mission. Screen, the USS Enterprise is to report immediately to Beta Myamid. The USS Masada has failed to report as scheduled. Determine nature of delay and take whatever measures are necessary. Okay, so they set course for Beta Myamid, sir. They didn't really give me a lot of information on this one. Just got to look for a missing ship. Now, the thing about this mission is that this mission is possible to fail in such a spectacular manner that you get an automatic zero for the rating no matter what you do. Which means that I can play this much more like a normal mission, show you how the, the gameplay of this game is supposed to work a little bit, uh, rather than skipping everything. So, I mean, a lot of times what you'd start by doing is talking to Spock and getting some advice from him. Perhaps you should access my library computer, sir. He's got a good point. There's some good information about this mission in the computer. But we can look up that star system we're supposed to go to. Beta Myamid, a Federation world. A supply depot orbiting Beta Myamid 8 has recently been subject to Ooh. attacks from Alasi pirates on two There's been attacks from pirates the there. Okay, now in the sequel to this game, Judgment Rights, uh, they actually got Majel Barrett to do the uh, voice of the computer. Unfortunately, on this game, they don't have her yet, and so it's somebody else doing the computer. It's not as good, but that's okay. So they said there were some Elasi pirates in that system. Oops, let's. Uh, Elasi pirates. There are several bands of pirates based from Elasi Prime. The Ajalasi family, the Ajthuri, okay. and the Andrasili. Recent events on Manalbagor have caused these bands, which typically battle each other, to unite and prey on Federation ships. So I think that we can actually look up those individual families. Topic? No, I guess not. Uh, how did you spell that? Manalbagor, yeah, you can look up planets. The only inhabited planet of the Alasi Prime system. There's a lot of stuff in the computer that you can look up. It's actually kind of surprising how much they have. Like, all the usual Star Trek stuff that you'd, you know, look up, like the Romulans. Romulans. You know. A race descended from Vulcans. And you can look up the Vulcans. Death Grip. There is no Vulcan Death Grip. The Vulcans. You know, and you can actually, you know, you can look up Sarek. And you can look up T'Pau. T'Pau. And, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Um... There is one bit of somewhat questionable authenticity, which is if you look up the Klingons. Klingons. It says their their homeworld is Kling, which is not. It's Konos. Everybody knows that. Kling. But then they do say it's possibly mythical. Possibly mythical. So, I think the idea is that in this time period, the Federation doesn't really know enough about the Klingons to know what their homeworld is actually called. Anyway, enough of this. Let's head to the Beta Myamid system, which I think is right here. There we go. All right, let's see what awaits us here. There is an unidentified ship uh -oh. cruising rapidly. Weapons on and shields up. Message coming in, sir. On screen, Lieutenant. Leave the Beta Myamid system immediately. No one tells me what to do. Not as much as we I'm are about to. A search and rescue mission for the USS Masada. It was last reported in this system. We cannot leave until we can confirm its location and condition. So be it. You have been warned. Prepare to die. Oh, if only. Weapons. Okay, so the Elasi pirates. I have no respect for them. Therefore, I'm not going to raise my shields. I don't need no stinking shields. See, he can't even hit me. 
can aim, but he cannot. Uh oh, oh shit. Ooh, that's not good. I actually did just took, take some hits to the engines. Okay, Scotty, work on that. Alright, that's right. Run away like Engines repaired, Captain. Yeah. Run away. Yeah. Let's see what he looks Target like. Uh, Target analysis. His front shields are pretty beat up. A few more hits on that and What a little bitch. Just run away. Ah, Captain. They are free. The enemy ship's initial intercept course was from the last known position of the Masada. I suggest okay. we orbit the planet for They're gonna try to get away. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the best I can to prevent that. Okay, where is he? Okay. Full speed ahead. No. Well, that was disappointing. He got away. Sometimes you can uh, take them out while they're running away, which would be right the sort of thing that I think Evil Kirk would do. But it looks like he evaded me. Oh, whatever. Okay, so let's orbit the planet. And oh my gosh, there it is! There she is, Captain. She does not appear to be seriously damaged. Her shields are up, and 27 life forms are aboard. Okay, so... I guess what we want to do is probably hail the ship. Hailing the ship, Captain. Greetings, Federation Imperialists. Haha. <laughs> I am Elasi Seraph, and I have claimed this ship as a blow for freedom against Federation tyranny. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. Okay, yeah, I could say that. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. Hmm. Listen, Lassie. Hand over the ship and hostages now, or things are going to get very nasty. This is Captain James T. Kirk. Nah, of the I don't US. like that this one. Captain, Let's go this with this is Captain one. James T. Kirk. Well, Kirk, someone is about to pay the price for insolence. Zzzz. Captain, there is now one fewer life form on the Masada. Freeing the prisoners you requested will take time. We have to track down their current locations, and Starfleet will have to grant permission to move them here. I will get that started. You should tender a show of good faith on your part. Will you beam over so we can discuss negotiations face to face? I'd say that. We can work together on this, Elasi. How about beaming some of the hostages over? Freeing the hmm. prisoners you requested will we can work together Let's on go this, Elasi. one. What? Lower my shield so you can beam over a war party? I'm not stupid, Captain. We'll play by my rules. So long as the shields are up, Captain, our hands are tied. Oh, the Enterprise can if only he knew what's day. coming. But the pirates would have all the time they need to kill every one of the hostages. Will you send over data on the whereabouts and conditions of my falsely accused clansmen languishing in your dungeons, Captain? Very well, we'll do it your way. I will put your fellow Elasi have been tried in Federation. Forget it, Elasi is You'll be the next one languishing on a Federation penal. Your jokes are dying, Captain Kirk, and so are the Masadans in the audience. <laughs> Captain, there is now one fewer life form on the Masada. My shields remain up, Captain. I don't wish to kill any more hostages, but I don't want to hear from you again unless you're ready to exchange prisoners or send me the data I request. Elasi out. Okay, so. Better save the game here. Save new game. And the reason we're saving here is because there are multiple ways to botch this mission. We'll start with the first one, which is the simplest way to do it. Which is... Talking them to death. So, Lieutenant Uhura, hailing the ship. Hail the ship. Do you have the data packet, Kirk? I'd like to Not sell you some Girl There's Scout cookies. Now. Captain, there is now one fewer life form on the Masada. Oh. Hailing the ship, Captain. 
Do you have Sir, we'd like you to fill out this survey about your voting me. preferences. Captain, there is now one fewer life form on the Masada. Have you heard of our Lord and Building Savior, Jesus Christ? Do you have the data packet, Kirk? Not yet. They are still working on it. Captain, there is now one fewer life form on the Masada. Message from Starfleet, uh -oh. Captain. Kirk, <laughs> you have completely mishandled this situation with the Masada. I hereby order you to break off negotiations immediately before any more damage is done. Your behavior will be reviewed for disciplinary action. <laughs> I'll be frank, Kirk. Starfleet expects more of you than that. Try to do better on your next assignment. <laughs> well, she didn't sound too happy, did she? Okay, so now we're gonna find another way to fail at this mission. And uh, this time, what we're gonna do is actually continue with the mission a little bit, uh, get a little further. And in order to do that, we've gotta get past the shields on the ship. But the problem right now is that its shields are up, we can't really beam over there, we can't really beam the hostages out, we can't really do anything until we take care of those shields. And we can't fight them because then they can just execute the hostages while we're battling the ship. So, usually Spock has some pretty good ideas for how to deal with situations like this, so let's ask him. Captain, we could use the command prefix code to lower the Masada's shields briefly, long enough for one transporter burst. Hey, that sounds like a pretty good idea. It also sounds exactly like what they did on the Wrath of Khan, to bring Khan's shields down. So that's a pretty good idea. Let's look it up in the computer. When we look up the Masada, we can find out its command prefix code. Masada. And there's USS. that code we need right here. A Federation tug tender okay. registry. And Don't need to listen to all that. Now, I'll just see if I can remember that number. Okay, I think that's it. And sending prefix and lowering the Masada shields. Somewhere on the Masada's bridge, one of the one of the uh, terrorists is going. Our shields are down, sir. Well, raise them. I can't. Okay, so let's beam over. Spock, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the car. Now you'd think we'd beam over a whole war party or something, but no, we're just gonna beam over the standard big three plus a red shirt. So, here, now on a normal mission it's a good idea to talk to all of the crew members because they usually give advice that's sometimes helpful and sometimes they say funny things. Get what you can from this area, let's get moving. I don't think Captain, a thorough yeah. analysis is required. Okay, but let's not stay too long in one place. I think most of the dialogue on this mission is pretty uh, serious. This is just though. like their raid on Damocles Station. Hard, fast, and dirty. Well, Jim, there's one thing I can tell you. I don't like Colossi. I can't see them winning any popularity contests, Bones. They can forget about my vote. When this operation is complete, Captain, we should have Mr. Scott or Transporter Chief Kyle come here to assist with the repairs. Ha! Let's not look too You're far You're assuming ahead, that this ship is still going to be here at the end of this mission. <laughs> okay. We can also, like, take the tricorder and we can kind of analyze the I am room. registering energy residue from phaser fire and phaser grenade detonations. There are readings of another energy Ooh, weapon. another energy but weapon. The type is unknown. That's a little, uh, kind of little subplot that, uh, or a little story arc that this game has going on during it. Is this unknown weapon that the Elasi pirates have. Well, they can... Even our most efficient chief engineer, Scott, would have trouble repairing this damage in less than two days. Okay. So the transporter's hosed. There's a guy over here that Bones could, uh, help, but we're not gonna do that. So, sorry, Bones. Go in here. Let's see what everyone's got to say here. This is a mess now, isn't it? My daddy would have sent me to bed without supper if I'd done something like this. Can't say I like the decor. This corridor provides access to the transporter room, Captain. It is secure. I don't think we can bring down that force field, Captain. 
If we could, though, it might be less risky than trying to transport onto the bridge. What Spock is referring to is a force field which blocks us from getting into this door, which we can see if we scan a it. A force field of unusual configurations has been erected in front of the doorway, which leads into the bridge. I don't think it would be healthy to approach too closely, Captain. I wonder if we can send the red shirt after it. I doubt that our phasers could get through that, Captain. Now, nah, this red shirt's smarter than most of the rest. He won't just blindly walk into danger. Five phasers without power packs. A drained phaser welder, insulation, and bits of wire, and droplets of cooled molten metal. Okay, that sounds interesting. Let's pick some of that stuff up. Might be useful. Okay, so when I played this game as a kid, it took me forever to figure out what to do here. But this, this is all... Uh, if you look at these items, you can find descriptions of all them. Here some we got, scraps of metal. Got some scrap metal. Some scraps of wire. Some wire. A phaser welder. It is without power. This phaser welder has no power packs, and these... These weapons are powerless, having been... The phasers also don't have their power packs. So, the implication is that th these phasers are here as a hint. They're missing their power packs. This is missing power packs. The idea is to let you know that you can take the power packs from the phasers and put them in the phaser welder. The reason this is really hard to figure out is because normally you can select one item and select another item and it just s switches to that. There's no real indication here that you can in fact use one item on another item sometimes, but that's the case here. I can take this phaser, use it on the welder. Phaser welder is now charged. And the phaser welder now has the power packs from the phasers. Now, oddly enough, the phasers are still functional. I don't really understand why, but Hey, there you go. So, anyway, if we went in this door, there's some hostages we could free in there. And if we did that, they would tell us that using the phaser welder on this force field, which... The field is absorbing the energy. Normally doesn't work, but if you do it in this particular spot that the hostages would have told me about... That did it. The field is deactivated, Captain. Now I can march right on the bridge without even freeing any of the hostages. Isn't that great? Okay, now normally you'd want to talk to them and get them to surrender, and that's how to get the best score. But I'm just gonna, you know... Bridge to brig. Kill the hostages! Scotty, beam down a security team to the bridge. We have regained control. Now watch this. The game didn't expect me to solve it this way. Scott beam us out of here. What are they pointing Hi, at? Captain. Where are they pointing their phasers at? What did you know? <laughs> but there you go. We have regained the ship. Unfortunately, all the hostages are dead. Message from Starfleet. And so are the terrorists. On screen, Lieutenant. We have read your report on the problems at Beta Myamid and evaluate your performance at zero percent. You and your crew received zero commendation points. I'll be frank, Kirk. Starfleet expects more of you than that. Try to do better on your next assignment. Trying to hold a Federation starship captive. Can you believe and this it? is the Since ending you're supposed to get. Very event, Doctor. I'm surprised you ask. It was a rhetorical question, Spock. That took quite a bit of organization to seize a starship. Think we'll see more of the Alassi pirates? Undoubtedly, Captain. I suspect they have considerable resources to draw on. So do I. Sulu, take us out of here. Hooray! Happy end. Okay. So... Last time we failed pretty hard. All the hostages died. That was pretty bad. But the thing is, the ship was still intact. So we can fail even more dramatically than that if we put a little effort into it. Now this is going to require some extra tools and this guy is going to give it to us. So we are actually going to have to revive this guy this time. So let's see. Let's see what's wrong with him. He's not hurt badly. I can revive him. Okay, Bones, you do that. Thank you, Doctor. Be careful, Captain. The Alassie like to set booby traps. 
If you need any equipment, I've got my tools in this workspace. Okay. We can also talk to him now. I suppose I should be grateful to see anyone after that. I thought I was dead. Well, with any luck, you won't have to worry about that for quite some time. Provided the Alassie don't have anything to say about it. And also provided that I don't blow up the ship in about five minutes. Whoops, did I say that? <laughs> okay, so I got this tool. Let's go and have a look and see what it is. The Runsnape Transmogrifier. This device was invented by an engineer with a sense of humor about names. With the proper attachments, engineers use it for temporary fixes on key circuits. Temporary fixes. The idea is that we can fix the transporter. So Spock can have a look at it in its current state here. The controls have been virtually destroyed, Captain. Can they be repaired, Spock? With Chief Engineer Scott's assistance, I believe we could get them in perfect working order in two days. Spock, we don't have two days. If we can repair the transporter, we might be able to transport onto the bridge and capture the Alassi. I can attempt to jury rig repairs if I can find parts. However, there is only a 67.357% probability of success. You know, I've always been a gambler, hmm. Spock. Figure out what you'll need. Always love those incredibly precise percentages. 67.357% chance. So anyway, we can use this thing on the transporter controls. Captain, I need to find a bit that will fit into the transmogrifier before I can go further with this. Okay, so this thing needs more parts. We'll have to just go and look for them. That's okay, because, you know, there's only a few rooms in this whole uh, ship. So... We still need these parts over here. And we still need to charge up the phaser welder. Phaser welder is now charged. Okay. Now the thing is that the phaser welder on the scrap metal... I think that does it. A comb bit for the transmogrifier. Now I can continue repairs on the transporter controls. Okay, and then we just put the bit in the transmogrifier. The parts fit together satisfactorily. There we go. Now, before we actually fit, fix the transporter, let's take care of the hostages. They're in here. Now, these guys over here... You know... Hey, what are you doing here? The thing about these guys is that, uh, normally, they will shoot you with the stun phaser. Normally, they use a phaser on stun. I don't know if you saw it there, but it was a green beam that came from his, uh, phaser. But the thing is, if you kill his buddy, he is now going to be really, really pissed off. And uh, when I come back, he will have revived, and he's going to not be playing around anymore. So. Hey, what are you doing here? So that's how you get your red shirt death in this mission, and. Really mad props to the uh, developers for thinking of that uh, possible outcome. It would be kind of silly if he didn't get pissed off, given that you know he's a terrorist, he doesn't have any prime directive or anything, and you know if I vaporize his buddy, of course he's going to start vaporizing me back. However, the developers didn't think things completely through, as you will see later. I'm not going to spoil what's going to happen, but they... Uh, there's an instance where we will find out that they definitely did not expect us to vaporize the red shirt in this room. Anyway, let's talk to everybody. They've turned this freighter into a prison barge. I see that the Alassi live up to their reputation, Captain. I don't like the looks of this, Jim. Okay. So, you know, we could push the button and open the force field. Let's let's uh, scan the people inside the first. The crew is tired and has elevated signs from extreme stress, but they will survive. Eh, for now, anyway. So if we scan the Nothing thing... Nothing to report, Captain. A medium-strength phaser bomb. The brig force field would contain the explosion, but it would kill the crew members within the cell. I recommend that we find a way of disarming it, Captain. If you just push the button, it goes boom and everybody dies. Captain, the switch has been booby-trapped to detonate a bomb, presumably inside the brig somewhere. And here's the wires that connect the button Captain, to the bomb. Captain, the switch has been booby So, obviously, 
you need to cut those wires. Uh, normally, the best person to do that would be the red shirt, since he's security and he's got experience in defusing bombs. Unfortunately, he's kind of scattered all over the room right now. So, uh, the next best person we got is, of course, Mr. Spock, who can do just about everything, because he's just awesome, because he's Leonard Nimoy. There. I believe the bomb is now defused, Captain. Captain, this wiring may prove useful in repairing the transporter. Well, that's nice of you to notice, Mr. Spock. We will pick up the wiring. And then we will let out the hostages. Thank you for freeing us, Captain. We'll secure the area so they don't come up behind you. We've had electrical problems with our Not that they can bridge, come Captain. up behind me the since they're all we dead. An electric shutdown device. You'd never find it by chance. But if you used a charged phaser welder two feet to the left of the door and one foot off the ground, you might be able to shut down the force field and get a jump on the Alassi. Yeah, we've already done that. I'm going to get that bomb. Going to have a look at the uh, new stuff we got. A length of wire removed. Just some wire, and then we got this bomb. A bomb with three wires. Primitive, but potentially quite deadly. Yes, quite deadly. So, um, now we can talk to this guy that we just uh, rescued. Thank you for freeing us. You better take the bridge before they suspect anything is up. Uh, you, you'd better hurry up, or they'll catch on, sir. Dude, you do your job and let me do mine. Anyway. One thing that I found was amusing when I was, uh, you know, as a kid, I dug around the resources to this game, and there's actually sound clips of him saying, "Ouch, that hurt," and there's another one of where he says, "What kind of idiot are you?" But I have never figured out how to make him say these things. So if anybody knows, I'd really like to know that. I don't think I can phaser him. Yeah, that doesn't work, and I don't think I can use this Nothing stuff. Nothing happens. Yeah. Nothing happens. The phaser welder, maybe. I don't know. Nothing happens. Or maybe I could just, like, punch him in the face. There's nothing at the moment for me to do there. No. Yeah, I have not figured out how to make him make those sound effects, but they are in the uh, resources. Anyway, we've got what we need here. We got the wire and we got the bomb, and now the only thing left to do is go and fix the transporter. Now, the funny thing about this, too, is if you actually want to get a high score, if you want to get 100%, uh, you actually get a higher score beaming in with the transporter than you do just, just taking this force field down and walking through the door. I have no idea why that is. It seems like walking through the door should be much more tactically advantageous since uh, they have a lot less time to react. When, you know, when, they, when you beam in, they've got time before they finish materializing and they're, they can have their phasers already pointed at you. But anyway, the way to win this thing is to... Actually, to get 100%, you have to take down the force field, then not use that door, and then fix the transporter. But anyway, let's just get on with this. Spock, fix the transporter. I attach these here. Now, all I need is a spare length of wiring. But actually, instead of Spock, let's have Bones fix the transporter. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a rocket scientist. <laughs> I love how he takes his medical tricorder and scans the thing anyway. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a rocket scientist. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. <laughs> I'm a doctor, not a target. Okay. So let's fix the transporter with the wiring. The controls are set for just inside the bridge door, Captain. Mr. Spock, you're a genius. I wouldn't go that far, Jim. But I do have to congratulate you, Mr. Spock. Now we can really risk shooting our atoms around the universe. Is this really necessary? I kind of have to Jim? agree with Bones. Analysis, Lieutenant Christensen. Security Whoa. analysis, sir. If we there is a freaking the bridge, ghost we'll talking to me right Assuming now. Assuming Mr. Spock has the transport. Holy shit. Properly. If we could get past the force field on the door of the bridge, we should be able to surprise Oh my god, who is talking Since to me? we have a bomb, Captain, we could rearm it, transport it onto the bridge, and perhaps the Elasi will flee into the hallway. Then we could capture them. And any hostages on the bridge will be killed when the bomb goes off. No, Jim, that's inhuman. To say nothing of the possible damage to the bridge controls. Holy shit. Spock and Bones actually agreed on something. They both agreed that I should not bomb or send the bomb to the bridge. However, you know, the, the, the uh, 
crazy voices inside my head of the red shirt that I vaporized are telling me to use the bomb, and I just, you know, I just can't go against that. I mean, when the crazy voices in your head tell you to do something, you know, who can argue with that, right? So, sorry, Spock and Bones. My God, Jim, what have you done? You've killed them all. You probably blew up the whole damn bridge. Whoops. Captain, the ship will crash into the planet in 18.32 seconds. I would recommend leaving the ship immediately. I'm sorry. You cold-blooded, emotionless. Bones, later. Kirk to Enterprise. Captain, you're alive. Beam us out of here. Bye, Captain. Uh-oh. Now the ship is crashing into the sun, and apparently we didn't bother beaming the hostages out. Just bother being in the big three, and that's it. Message from Starfleet, Captain. On screen, Lieutenant. Kirk, you have completely mishandled the situation with the Masada. You killed the hijackers on the Masada, and all the hostages as well. Your own crew had to transport you out of the wrecked ship before it went utterly out of control. Your record of Maverick stunts will be completely reviewed for consideration of disciplinary action. You have much to answer for, Captain Kirk. Consider yourself lucky that you're allowed to retain your command until we get back to you on this. Starfleet out. Whoa. I'll be Frank Kirk. Starfleet expects more of you than that. Try to do better on your next assignment. That's about the biggest dressing down you can get in this game. Well, here's the next one. Love's labor jeopardized. Let's see what see Starfleet. we got this time. On screen, Lieutenant. A raid across the Romulan neutral zone has placed Starfleet Research Station Arc 7 in jeopardy. Proceed immediately to Arc 7 and determine the status of the station. Good luck, Jim. Hmm. Suddenly she's not mad anymore. Well, anyway, that mission will have to wait till next time. But I'm sure we will have a great amount of fun doing it. Plus, that mission is probably the one of the most fun missions in this game. I love the Arc 7 mission, so I can't wait to do the next one. But, we're gonna have to wait. So, um, yeah, until next time, guys. Later. know any better what kind of an idiot are you I'm on your side sir you, you better hurry up or they'll catch on sir there's no need to fire at me you imperialist Federation scum I spit upon you damn it Jim I'm a doctor not an electrical engineer I'm likely to blow us all up I'm a doctor not a space jockey hey what are you doing here Jim, that man is mad. My God, Jim, what have you done? I believe that no deity had any bearing on this doctor. But the captain should have been more careful. My daddy would have sent me to bed without supper if I'd done something like this.